Hogwarts Legacy is finally here, and if you're ready to leave house console, you filthy little mob blood, and you want to join house gaming PC, this is literally exactly how I would do it on a budget. Today, I'll be showing you exactly how I would build a PC that's themed around Harry Potter, and this will be super easy for first-time PC builders as I'm including a ton of alternative parts for you to use just in case you can't find exactly what I used. I'm also going to show you exactly how you can theme your PC based off of which house you're a fan of or really just any other Harry Potter theme. Let's get building this thing. that building montage or elite wizard gameplay wasn't too intimidating for you, we're going to break down this build part by part so you know exactly what you'll need if you or someone else you know needs a new gaming PC to play this game. Maybe a nagging kid that screams like a mandrake. <laughs> We're using all brand new parts that are super easy to find, and in case you already peeked at the game system requirements page, don't worry, this will be much easier than that. I was reading through this. Reading? <laughs> I didn't know you could read. And I noticed that all the hardware on here is between two to seven generations old, so if you're a first time PC builder, this isn't exactly super useful information. If you're a PC building muggle, comparing these ancient parts to anything brand new might as well be magic, so just leave it to me and I'll make sure you're taken care of here. And if you're on a budget, red hair and a hand-me-down robe, don't worry because I'll make sure this guy doesn't empty out your bank vault at Gringotts. And speaking of which, in a few minutes, I'm gonna show you how you can make some extra money to fill up that vault for a build like this, so stay tuned for that. But like I said, if you are trying to copy this step by step, I'll be showing you alternative parts that you can easily swap out in case you can't find anything, and links to literally everything I'm talking about today are down in the description. Also, this won't be a typical guide where you'll have to follow my build exactly. This will be a bit more flexible. Oh, much more flexible though. I'm also going to be showing you some benchmarks and gameplay footage of Hogwarts Legacy as I've been personally playing this myself, and we'll throw in some extra benchmarks of other games just so you know exactly how this build will perform. Real quickly, if you could comment down below how many times you've personally watched through all of the Harry Potter movies, that would be much appreciated. I'm trying to gauge how dedicated my audience is here on this video. I've personally watched through all of the movies probably two times. I'm the two time. But I have a feeling over the next month or two while my wife is playing this game, she's going to be playing these movies non-stop on our TV. <laughs> And without further ado, let's start with the CPU, which is the brain of any PC. And here I went with last year's Intel i3-12100F, which is a good starting point, honestly, for any new budget build. Despite the i3 label, this is still a very popular and powerful processor, and us experienced PC builders use it a ton because there's just no other $100-ish dollar competitor on the market that's worth it right now. And it's debatable if you should spend the extra $20 to $30 to get Intel's 13th generation 13100F. If you have the extra money, then go for it. But as a beginner PC builder, I would recommend getting the 12100F. That way you can just get a B660 motherboard and you don't have to worry about updating the BIOS for it. We'll talk about the motherboard in just a second, but if you are looking for some alternatives to the 12100F, I would recommend the Ryzen 5 5600 if you want to go Team Red. The Intel i5 12400F is a great option if you want just a little extra horsepower. And of course, that 13100F if you do have a way to update your BIOS. And real quickly, like I said in the intro, you can actually make some extra money to buy all this PC hardware very very easily straight from your phone, all you gotta do is download pawns.app. We're actually teaming up for this video and they're gonna start off your account with a quick dollar just to get you started. But what I think is cool is that you can make real money when you're bored and not doing anything. That way you can afford more or better PC hardware parts for your builds. Check this out. It's super simple to use. All you gotta do is click the first link down in the description and download the pawns app to get started. Here you can quickly just complete a couple surveys where companies are paying for your opinion on certain things because that information is actually important to them. 
them. No matter what demographic you are, companies will pay for your opinions on certain things like technology, which we're all into, but even things like cars, fashion, your political opinions, and even what kind of bread you buy. That's the one I literally just did. They also have a very cool feature where they pay you to share your internet bandwidth. So if you have unlimited data, this is a way to quickly make some passive income without doing any extra work. This could seriously be the difference between you getting a 500 gigabyte or a one terabyte SSD. So click the first link down in the description to get started with that $1 in your account. Going back to the motherboard though, here I went with the Gigabyte B660M DS3H. And honestly, this doesn't have to be a huge decision as there's only a couple of factors that are important when deciding which one to go with. I would first make sure that your board has four RAM slots. That way you can upgrade in the future because we're only using two of the slots today. And then I would just get one with any of the features that are hard requirements for you. And remember that with desktop gaming PCs, having built-in Bluetooth and built-in Wi-Fi aren't necessarily standard like how every single phone and every single tablet has them built in. So if you want them built in, you're gonna have to make sure that your motherboard is compatible with it. And just in case you don't, you can always just buy a 10 to $20 USB dongle or wand, that'll get the job done. USB-C can also be an important feature to some people, especially if you're using a case that has a USB-C port on the top of it like we're doing today, but it's not necessarily a requirement. And for alternatives, if you go with the 12100F CPU, then just get any B660 motherboard that's the same form factor as whatever your case is. Ours is micro ATX, which is why we got a B660M motherboard. Moving on to RAM, we got a two by eight gigabyte DDR4 kit that's collected 3200 megahertz, which are the important parts. But specifically, this is the Kingston Fury Beast RGB kit, which I picked up for $48 new on Newegg. This was a pretty solid deal for RGB RAM, but I do think RGB is important in a themed build like this. By having RGB control of your RAM sticks, you'll then be able to pair that color with whatever else is in your build, such as a Funko Pop or cable extensions. This will look so much better than just having all black sticks in there. For some alternatives, you can expect to pay just a bit more than the deal I got for around 50 to 60 bucks, but I would get either the T-Force Delta RGB kit, YOLO Blade RGB, or some Patriot Steel Viper RGB sticks. Next up, we get to the SSD, and this is the component that lets you Accio all of your saved files. And honestly, a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive is all you really need. 500 gigabytes is enough for all the software you'll use, plus Hogwarts Legacy and a couple of extra games. But of course, you can always upgrade to one terabyte if you think that's needed. I went with this NeTac 500 gigabyte NVMe drive because they were priced at $25, which is a steal, so I bought 10 of them. But there's a ton of other options that you can use, such as the Team Group MP33, the Patriot P310, or even the Crucial P3 if you want to spend a few extra bucks. And yes, if you've been watching my content, you'll know that these are the same three I usually recommend. Why is it always you three? These are just always available at an affordable price point for these budget builds. Moving on, we get to the power supply, and this is seriously the hardest component to shop for because the good deals are far and few between, unfortunately, right now. I picked up this 550 watt Enermax Marble Bron, not to be confused with their Cyber Bron, and the reason I got this one is because Enermax is actually selling this on Java, and it's been consistently the most reliable deal for the past couple of months now. Java is a great online marketplace where people and even companies like Enermax can sell gaming PCs and hardware, and honestly, it's pretty much the best spot to do that right now. Now. I am a little biased because I have some equity in the company, but trust me, this website is gonna Leviosa its way to the top. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Back to the power supplies though, the number one tip I can tell you during these tough times is to just consult the PSU tier list, just Google that and select the first option, and buy whichever one you can find a good deal on that's at least tier C. For any budget build that's under $1,000 or so, I think going with a tier C or a tier B unit is fine, but if you're buying a PC that costs more than $1,000, I would recommend only getting tier B or tier A. Here's some alternatives that I've kind of been consistently finding good deals on in the last couple of months, but again, it's been a bit tricky lately. Next up, we get to the case, and here we have a hands down winner in my opinion. This is the Fractal Design Pop Air Mini, and I'm just absolutely in love with it. I love the micro ATX and low to the ground stance and form factor, and it also comes with a neat drawer in the front to house your goodies, maybe the golden snitch, for example. It also has three RGB fans pre-installed with an RGB connector to add even more RGB products, and because of this, you don't even need to make sure your motherboard has RGB support as you can just use the case button for addressable RGB products. For a third option, you can also use a SATA powered RGB controller like this. The price is also really good at only $90. And this is the same case that we use for our Death Strike gaming PCs, which we keep restocked on our website, zaxtechdrip.com. And those builds are always available with the link down in the description. That PC will play Hogwarts Legacy even better than this one, by the way. Moving along here though, we get to the cable extensions and I only went with black for this build so it matches with multiple color schemes depending on which Funko 
Pop we're using, but I would recommend picking one with colors that match the specific design that you're going for. Here's examples of cable extensions that would match perfectly with various Harry Potter Funko Pops, and this will look even better than just the black ones that I got for the video today. After that, we have the CPU cooler, and I would really recommend any all black air cooler that has an ARGB fan on it. Again, we can just plug this directly into our case, so one button controls the RGBs on all three case fans and the CPU cooler fan, and I went with the Deepcool AG400 BK ARGB, which is usually less than $30. Here's some alternatives for a similar price point, which will achieve all the same goals of easily cooling our CPU and giving us the flexibility with the color scheme of the build. And next up, we get to the Funko Pops, and as you can see, I bought four of them here, and honestly, if you match the aesthetics of your build with any of these Funko Pops, your build is gonna look amazing. Here's some examples of exactly how I did that, and I just love how they turned out, even without getting the specific colored cable extensions like I recommended. The icy blue look paired with the Patronus is as chill as it gets, and I really like this orange and red fiery look of the Phoenix build as well. For Malfoy, you can obviously just go with green and black, which is already a proven tier A color scheme in PC building, but shout out to this Funko Pop being limited edition apparently, so I had to pay $32 for it. Let me know down in the comment section if I got scammed on that one. And finally, we have one more component to go over, and that's obviously the graphics card, and here's where you'll ultimately determine how much you want to spend on the gaming PC. For a budget new build like this, I think a good sweet spot would simply be AMD's RX 6600, which is what I have here, and this is easily the best GPU option for under $230, and there's honestly not much competition at this price point. If you have more money to spend, then the i3 12100F can handle up to around an RTX 3070 or an RX 6700 XT, so if you want to go higher than that, then you'll also have to upgrade your CPU to something like a 12400F or really any 13th gen i5. If you go to pc-builds.com and look for their bottleneck calculator, here you'll able to easily see if a CPU and GPU combo is a good pairing like Fred and George, or maybe it's bad like Harry and Cho Chang. She was sort of crying. That bad it, are you? But either way, just use that as a quick reference point if you're unsure if there will be a bottleneck. And for you first time PC builders out there that are way more focused on Hogwarts Legacy instead of super specific PC hardware bottlenecking scenarios, basically we're just trying to match the performance of the processor and the graphics card. That way you're getting your money's worth and getting the full performance out of them. Just as a reminder, the GPU is the one component that will have the biggest impact on how smooth and pretty your Hogwarts Legacy gameplay is. So if you are trying to spend some extra money somewhere in your build, the graphics card is exactly where you should spend it. These RX 6600s are pretty easy to find around $200 to $230. And the next sweet spot I would say is the RX 6650 XT, which have been going for some pretty nice sales lately around 250 bucks. Also, feel free to go with whatever model and brand that you think looks the coolest or whichever one you find a good deal on. Honestly, there's just not that much of a difference between the different models. And with that being said, here's what our full parts list is looking like and what I paid for everything. And per usual, just in case you made it this far and decided there's no way you want to do this, I will be selling this PC over on my website. And this one will go live on the March 1st launch if you can wait that long. It'll sell out pretty quickly though, FYI. So as far as the benchmarks go, this PC is playing the game really smoothly so far and it just looks amazing. Now, when I first jumped in, my game initially set the settings to 1080p low with a 66% resolution scale and FSR 1 enabled. And I was getting like over 250 FPS with that. So don't rely on the automatic settings because it is very conservative. I found the sweet spot for this PC to be around 1080p high settings because with that, I got an average FPS of 115 with just a 1% low of 60 and the game was running buttery smooth like that. If you have a 1080p 60 hertz monitor, then you can probably jump up the settings to 1080p ultra. It would probably run fine like that as well. And then here is the bench marking run that I did for it. Obviously, I don't have a ton of time to test this game, so I couldn't get further into the story, but I found that this was a pretty good spot because it allowed me to run freely anywhere inside Hogwarts and outside Hogwarts. And as you can see, the FPS does dip like 20 to 30 FPS whenever you go outside compared to inside. And there wasn't a ton of action here, but this is just a quick benchmarking run that I was able to do at, at this time. And real quickly, I did just want to show the performance with other games. And here's 20 more benchmarks that we ran for this system using 1080p resolution. Solution. The 12100F and RX 6600 are a proven combination at this point, and you can easily play literally any single game on the market with it. And just in case you don't want to spend this much money, but you still want to play Hogwarts Legacy, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.